Hey, we're back with an all-new No Prize Podcast. I am the professor. That's Lucas. How's it going, Lucas? Hey. Unbelievably well, man, and unbelievably bad, and we'll get to that <laughs> in a second. <laughs> uh, let's just spend some time on some bad comic books this week. Um, how was your Thanksgiving, man? You know me, man. I, I drunk too much and I ate too much, <laughs> man. I, I still, I'm still. You would, you would believe that at my age, I would be able to find the balance. And between you know eating, I, I still haven't figured it out yet, man. But I can say this: I can say this. At least my wife did not try and put raisins in the mac and cheese, man. Ooh, um, is that a thing? That is a thing. And when I mentioned it on some of the other shows, people were fighting me on this. Uh. Um, they're like, "Oh man, raisins and mac and cheese. That's that's the bomb. That's the that's the thing now." Like, no. oh, and then and then another dude tried to tell me about his mother-in-law who puts raisins and tacos um, for some uh, reason. Ra- so no. yeah, no. yeah, I, yeah, yeah. No. Once again, once again, you know, I I don't you know criticize about anybody and their home life and everything, but I do know this. Thanksgiving as a tradition is almost perfect in itself, whether you're fight with your family or nothing. But if you really want to get murdered on Thanksgiving, you go ahead and put some raisins in front of me on Thanksgiving. You go right on ahead. <laughs> Easy. Along we're going yeah. to lose our sun made sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially with that, that those shriveled up cranberries that people would be trying to put in stuff. You know, like, like oh, people on another level, man. I, you know, I, I don't mind raisins, and I actually like those freeze-dried cranberries, but uh, I wouldn't put them in stuff. I, uh, mac and cheese? Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. No. That's, that, that's, that, that's for those survival bars, man, that you eat. When you when there's absolutely nothing else that we can eat, you can go ahead and mess around with that. But not no, not on, not on Thanksgiving, but there you go. Well, I'll tell you, my favorite side dish is the my mom makes those these cheesy potatoes that are just delicious, and they're they to die for. And she only makes them on Thanksgiving, so if you want them on Thanksgiving, you got to go. So, it's a uh, it's something else, but that's, that's a that's, that's a nice. long standing tradition in my house, household. Uh, that's why nice. we still invite her. <laughs> <laughs> like old lady, I don't like you, but if it wasn't for that one plate, let me tell you. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's jump let's jump on uh, on Disney Plus. Uh, Hawkeye dropped last week. We got the first two episodes, and then we just got a third episode drop before uh, before we pr- uh, podcasted this week. Um, so, but well, my uh, my my initial thoughts of the first episode a little slow, but I think I kind of find that those Disney Plus shows are that. And then um, the second episode was better, and the third episode was the best one yet. So I I really think that it's really kind of going uphill. Um, do, do you want to say something about that before we maybe, I don't know if we spoil any of the characters or anything, but what do you think? So, I mean, we're, we're talking about pacing here, right? So, yeah. you know, uh, the pacing right now is that they're taking the time for each character because they got like an hour for each show, right? So they're taking yeah. the time a little, for a each, less, yeah. right? So for, to let us get into the, the family life of or the personal level or the background of each character. So the first one, it was Hawkeye, right? right. Um, we could see what was going on with him. And not necessarily his back, but what, what's what's he been up to, right? Because, you know, ever since the uh, Infinity Wars and, you know, everybody's back and, you know, get to see what he's up to, you know, with his family's on growing up now. Um, he's still got to – he's got to make up for some lost time. Um and that was in number one. Number two, it's really getting to what's going on with Kate Bishop and the fact that her stuff is all jacked up between her mom and and uh, I'll we'll say that till we're getting ready to go into spoilers about who her mother in law or excuse me who her mother is dating. Um, yeah. And then uh, and who her and uncle the, is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh no, Echo. Echo's no, uncle. No, no, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's and that's uh, number three, right? Where we get into Echo, uh, yeah. Maya Lopez. Mm-hmm. Um, so that it, it's very interesting because they've got to they've got to give us action, and in the meantime, they've got to show us who these people are. And you know what? It, it's been nice, man. All we need is an episode where we get figure out what's going on with Lucky the dog, and and, and we'll be straight, <laughs> right? Um, I, I like I like where it's at right now. I like the possibilities right now. Um, 
I, I think people are a little uh, front loading their ex expectations right now, where they because people are just going off the rails. They're like, well, Haley Steinfeld, oh man, she's going to be the next Tony Stark. Mm, no, not not no, that that yeah. that's, that's 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 a little too far. You know, what I mean, um, she is doing absolutely great as a sidekick to uh to uh the the main Hawkeye right now. Right. Doing absolutely freaking great. Let us see her. Let's see her grow up right next to him, right? Let's see her in some more, possibly in like a season two. Like give us a season two of this. Let us see her grow up um, and come into her own. And then he can say, you know what? I'm beaten down. I got my family. Let me go ahead and pass this this torch on to the next Hawkeye. But don't don't do it yet. Don't put don't 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 put the expectations on her yet. All right. You no, know, we're we're basically struggling off of the whole Peter Parker, you know, getting the thing from Iron Stark, uh, from uh, Tony Stark, and that didn't go well at right. all. Right. Uh, so, 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 people, slow your roll. Let her do her, th let her do her thing. Let her come into her own, and then we'll be there. Yeah, I, th I think, um, I think what they, what Disney Plus or the writers in 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 Marvel, the MCU, have a have a good pension for doing is taking the best parts of a story like the Hawkeye limited series with uh from Matt Fraction, David Aja. Um that so Matt Fraction, I don't know if you noticed he got consulting producer credit on this, which oh, means he got paid, which is awesome. Thank you. Good congratulations, Matt Fraction. Thank you, Marvel, for actually recognizing that and doing that. Okay. Um but uh with the the story like the tracksuit mafia come on what better bad guys <laughs> are there out there right now because they're just funny and they're they're just like what kind of unexpected right they're they're the yeah. they're the classic uh chumps right um but then right. you have you have echo in front of them who's revealed to be kind of the leader but i think there's more there right because with that third yeah. episode where you got we got her backstory well, um it's very sympathetic character right well, well no so i want to i want to really back right there because you, yeah. you made a great really great point with the tracksuit mafia because the the thing about the tracksuit mafia is that they are real people they are like that that's a, like a real thing uh and in the comics, the comics, uh, the comics tracks from Mafia, they're based off of the, the Tsushikis, right? Mm -hmm. And with the, per, the current political climate that's going on right now, so for those that don't know, back in like 2010 to 2013, um, Russia and Ukraine were having some serious issues, right? Russia was current, interfering in Ukrainian politics, um, and Ukrainian pro protesters were out there protesting their interference. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, up pop these paramilitary guys, these volunteers who are out there bashing heads, and they were called the Tsushikis, and they were all wearing tracksuits, and that's who these guys were based off of. Hmm. Um, so that, once again, that was 2011 to 2013. Well, guess what's happening again? Like as we speak right now, um, you know, every every day CNN is reporting. Oh, hey, Russian tanks and everybody is heading straight to Ukraine right now. So it's so interesting for Twitter that right as this episode airs, this same stuff that brought up these guys mm -hmm. is, is happening again. Uh, so absolutely, it, in this episode, they're hilarious and funny as hell. But the stuff behind of why they're there is, is so fun. It's so interesting well and but if you remember the hawkeye limited series from i was it around 2014 right like what are we talking about um where they had like they were all calling each other bro and yeah. and all that stuff they pulled that right out of the comic which i thought i thought was great but even with even the chase scene right they're driving that truck it's like bro painting company and mm -hmm. i'm just like i was dying i thought that was i thought that was great that was probably one of the best chase scenes that i've seen marvel do um yes. Mm -hmm. with the uh, with uh, all the different trick arrows that uh, they finally broke out and let Hawkeye use all of them which was fantastic and um it just goes to show you like like I always tell people you know Captain America is my favorite Marvel character but Hawkeye is a very close second yeah. and um where I kind of thought the Hawkeye limited series and I've said this before on this podcast I think the Hawkeye limited series did a long way to actually ruining Hawkeye's character that they had built up over 50 years mm. um but he works in this environment where um, in this show, 
Clint's not really the bumbling boob that he was portrayed of in the in the um, comic. They make Kate that, <laughs> which yeah. which I thought was great. I was like, okay, because Kate should be that bumbling idiot really of the like the new superhero she doesn't really know what she's doing um but she wants she's trying to help but she she's overconfident and they even have that conversation of the ridiculous overconfidence right yes. mm, <laughs> and, and yeah. i thought i thought that that was uh that was great and it's it, it's i think a credit to the writers to be able to kind of recognize that and just kind of switch it on the fly to make the uh, these character notes really kind of sing and that's that's where i like this show and I, I just hope they are able to continue the quality and, and maybe wrap it up in a in a proper way. Uh, we we know that there's a, a huge character introduction coming, um, not Echo, but Echo's uncle, who we just mentioned. Um, I know that they haven't revealed who he is yet, but um, I have my uh, yeah, my suspicions, suspicions. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think this is going to be the first time we see a Netflix character make the switch over to Disney Plus. Right. So we're talking about Kingpin. So yep, um, for sure. Yeah. So so man, you're you're unpacking a lot, man. Uh. So yeah. So you know, Echo's background is that she was a well, she was a deaf mutant, uh, and her father actually worked for for the Kingpin at one point. He goes out on a mission or some criminal activity and he, he dies. Um, mm -hmm. Kingpin takes her takes her in. Um, and then from then all types of sh shenanigans. Um, I forget at what point she actually starts to become good, but that's that's the thing, right? So in the meantime, uh, you know, right now in the comics, they've acknowledged that. In fact, I, what was what was it that I wrote? Uh, Phoenix Echo, yeah. Echo song. song. Did yeah. that come out this week or last week? It came out that came week. out this week. Right, right. So, so they're delving into that, right? Where a they, they talked about her father and that he was uh, basically a shitbag. And but what's weird, and I I know we're not reviewing that this week, but it, what's weird is it looks like they're trying to erase that part of her past, hmm. where they're trying to erase her father like in a weird way like the time travel they're like oh well your father is not your father anymore so we're going back further and in, 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 uh and back in time to see who actually is your father now it's weird yeah it, it's 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 weird so um i'm i'm, I'm gonna I, i'm gonna see what where they're going with that one but i don't i don't see it going anywhere because it's like okay because everybody knows if you kill your parents when you time travel you kill yourself that, that, that's just the way that goes, but they decide not to do that. Um, well, the, yeah, we could talk multiverse all day, which she's just killing, <laughs> she's just killing a multiversal version of her dad. But yeah. whatever. But, but 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 you know, you you talk to the overconfidence of Hawkeye and how he is, and so so what's what's interesting is is that you know if you if you go back right now that we know that there there is uh part of his disability was the hearing thing, right? Um, yeah. If, now, if if you go back with that knowledge that hey he, he's actually hearing impaired, you can go back and say, well, those times when he was just nonchalant and he was looking at you and he just shrugged you off and well he was he's hearing impaired. It's not that he wasn't we can just listen to you. It's because he's hearing impaired and you know he he's just, he's just trying to take in the important information and act on it <laughs> as quick as possible. Yeah, you know, so, they, so that gives a different element to him. They did a good element in the third episode where where uh, Echo stomped on his hearing aid, and for about half of the episode, you were getting half of the audio, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And they were doing the, those tricks where you know he was trying to read Kate's lips, or that, and that chase scene was classic because they're yelling back and forth at each other because he can't hear her, <laughs> you know. And I thought I, I thought that was great, and then her discovering all the different types of arrows that he had, and. And what use were they? And, and, what's, and what's crazy is is that I, I could have sworn in one of the earlier episodes she asked him about the trick arrows, and he said he didn't use trick arrows. Yeah, I think mean, he was lying though, or mm. maybe he didn't hear her. Yeah, <laughs> so. and, and trick arrows is like no, no trick arrows, like okay, um, you know, and and just taking the time out to let her see it just a little bit of his life with, with with the phone call right they didn't make it a big deal they just had a yeah. quick two minute phone call to show hey while i'm helping you try to figure your life out i'm actually missing christmas with mm -hmm. my family 
that that I I, I love that you know because sometimes you know people they try and slow stuff down but just just a slow it, it's one of those things that makes sense right and yeah. it gets those people together like like hey she's not a total shit back because she was willing to help him out you know he gets to see she gets to see who he really is and what's what's on the line for for him um just just a really really good moment uh, this this might be uh this might be one of the shows that i think of as a christmas show and watch every year i don't know <laughs> we might we might go that, that way uh tell me what do you think of um so they haven't ha- haven't revealed really who who jack duquesne is um in the show um but marvel fans will know that he is the swordsman, swordsman. Yes. And, um, you know, they've kind of, you know, they have him playing with the swords and everything, but they haven't really shown him as a costumed character, which we may not see that. Um, but what do you think? Because that's now this is like a, another Avenger out of the pike that, um, you know, started out as a villain, much like Clint did, and mm-hmm. then uh, eventually turns uh, heroic. Um, and do we see that? Because, it, like, it's these these characters that they're introducing they're introducing a ton of characters we get um we get swordsman echo kate bishop um all future avengers all you know really kind of not move i, I don't want to say swordsman's a mover and or shaker in the marvel universe but he factored into a few different storylines um yes, the sir. celestial madonna storyline from 50 years ago with uh with the avengers with mantis um you know, he, but I know yeah. that we'll we'll never see that. But um, right. So 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 just recently, within the last year or two, uh, there was that one storyline where his because he has a son, right? Yeah. And um, I forget what son's name is, but son is uh, part of this weird race called the Katari, where they are yeah. um, they're like a man thing type of race where he can control the plants and the seeds and everything, right? Yeah. Uh, so that would be that would be interesting to see because that would that ties into hulkling and and um uh, and i forget the name of his partner uh right now Wick, uh, wiccan wiccan yes yes yeah. yes uh so so this ties into what i've been telling to telling people for a while now like hey if you start to see these fringe characters all of a sudden start to pop up in these storylines you are going to see them in the mcu yeah i've been telling people that over and over again and Granted, Swordsman was the last one that I thought was going to show up, but sure enough, here he is. But he so, but he ties into Hawkeye's origin story, um, which I, I think they're too similar in age right now for them to actually do that. But um, if you, I don't know if you remember Swordsman in Hawkeye's origins, but um, Hawkeye joined a circus when he was younger, and um, everybody that's where was he part learned, of the circus when they were younger. That's where he <laughs> learned uh, the, the archery. Um, from another character called Trickshot, who I don't think we'll see. But Swordsman took uh, Clint and his brother Barney under the wing and turned them, basically turned them into criminals. And um, and then they they had a falling out once they realized uh, Swordsman was uh, stealing from the circus. The the two of them, uh, you know, turned away from him. But that that turned into um, like a big. A big thing later on so that's so that's the history clint and uh and jack duquesne have which they don't seem to have in here and it looks like they're kind of putting jack in of course with kate um right. which is which is another i think adept writing move right you just switch those relationships around a little bit and then have have kate realize that jacques a, a scumbag um, which i'm sure we'll find out next episode considering how episode three ended <laughs> so yeah so but we'll, it's we'll nice see. yeah nice seamless storylines i like i like the way the the pieces kind of kind of fit all in together now there's no random character that's just all of a sudden just thrown there for no for no reason um and then and then, we, and then you talked about earlier about the possibility that kingpin is coming really soon i don't know whether in that episode or or at the end but i think he'll be the reveal at the end of the show that's what i think right yeah. and we'll find out well and that and you know what that might lead into the revelation that there'll be like season two right because if mm. they if they reveal kingpin as being the big uh the the mafia leader behind the track suits and and uh you know and that's how you know she'll echo will realize 
how evil Kingpin is at some point, right? And that's where she'll turn good. Um, but Echo's getting her own show on Disney Plus too. So that could be maybe we don't get a Hawkeye two, but Echo season one where Kingpin spins off into that, right? Nice. So that that's I mean they're building up so much, and that's I, one of my complaints about the Disney Plus is it always seems like everything is building up to the next thing, so you never really get an ending with anything. <laughs> you yeah. Know? So it's like everything is like okay, what's next? And but I, you know I, what? That that's fine. You know why? Because oftentimes, how many times have we had a hyped up storyline and then they just don't know how to end it? Right. So then, don't, like, don't end it. The only ending we really got was Endgame, and it was right in the title. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything else has been uh, how can we how can we make this show satisfying but build to the next thing? Because we always want to leave you wanting more, which I, a great sales strategy. Um, but sometimes when you're storytelling it, like when you don't get all your questions answered by the end of the season, you know, sometimes, and then it shows that you're not sure are going to get season twos like vision, uh, like uh, vision, Scarlet, Witch, um, stuff like that. It's kind of question like, well, so I now, now they're going to have spinoff Agatha Harkness. I don't know <laughs> if I'm on board for that. You know, I, right. I, we, so. I mean, we're basically, you're, they're still struggling to get Dr. Strange out. He just went right. back. The last time I talked to you, they were talking about that they were going in and doing some changes. Now they're going back for more reshoots. So uh, okay. Insane, man. I mean, that's typical, though. I mean, they typical have typically have reshoots. But, I mean, that movie's what's supposed, supposed to come out it, when? But it, the thing is, it was already supposed to have been out. Yeah, but, I mean, that's it's coming out now in May, or did they push it back again to July? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to figure that out. Because right. I've been hearing all types of crazy stuff, man. Because last, last I heard, it got pushed back again. All right, and yeah, then uh, remember, so before we take a break, uh, two weeks, we are two weeks out from Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, so that is the next big thing, and I'm sure we'll be talking about that on the next podcast. Um, and, uh, you know, ho hopefully not a non-spoiler-filled review. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see the movie before the podcast, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll see. Uh, but that looks like that's going to be probably the blockbuster of the year. Um, because people have been staying away from movie theaters, but I think this one is going to be driving people to the theaters. So we'll see. Man, we'll see. <laughs> I can't wait though. But all right, let's uh, let's take a quick break, and uh, and then we'll come back and talk some comics. Let's do. Yeah. Do you want to find out what makes a professor do his happy dance? Check out the All Timers Comic Book Show only on the UCPN. I only dance for old timers, so I don't dance for no prize. <laughs> 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 ah, all right. So, um, so let's get into um, well, let's let's do last week's book first that we were going to do. Um, cause you know, we know that we only do these, the, the podcast every two weeks. So we have two weeks worth of books. Generally, we kind of stay away from last week's books cause we want to give you this week's books, but sometimes we get a book that we want to talk about last week. So we make some time to do that. So we're going to go into the new black Panther number one and, uh, Lucas, that's a great cover, right? Yes, it is. This one is by Alex Ross, and this is not even like the best cover that was out there. It's a good cover, absolutely great cover. Yeah. In fact, I think there's a poster out there for it. Um, but there's also uh, another great cover by Simone Bianchi, which was the one in fifty. And I don't know if you remember the uh, the fire one, which with the uh, fire yes. zone. That one was Sam Spratt. That was a one twenty five. Great cover. Uh, so Black Panther number one, written by John Ridley. Um, which is interesting. John Cabal and Federico Blee, um, letter by Joe Sabino. So, you know, this is this is one of those things where it's like, okay, I forget the name of the uh, the one particular writer who was who was writing Captain America for a while as well, uh, and he was Coates tonight. Yeah, tonight Co Coates. Yeah, and he was just doing terrible at it. You know, he's the one that put Black Panther out in space. Now they got to walk it back, right? You know. Mm. You know they're still adding some of the elements in there, but it just it just didn't work. It was stupid. Now, now Black Panther is the the king, not not excuse me, not just the king. He's the emperor of a galactic empire. 
um, which is crazy enough when you think about it. Uh, so now he's, but in the meantime, while he's still a Galactic Emperor, he is also still the chairman of the Avengers, right? So this is the first thing we see him is he's leading the Avengers to the battle against an un faceless enemy, right? Um, we don't know where who who these creatures are or where they come from, but he's he's like, hey, freaking Avengers, let's let's go and fight these things instead of calling up his Galactic Empire buddies to say, hey, freaking, can you help me out with this? So I thought that was that was kind of weird. So in the meantime, you know, he's per, apparently the uh, most of the Avengers is still Thor, Doc Strange is there, and Captain America, and it's just kind of those guys. Um, and they get, they, of course, they dispense with those those beasts and villains and everything and then at the end Captain America turns to Black Panther is going hey all right hey nice to see you still with us and everything but you know you've been away for a while mm -hmm. what, what's what's the deal are you with us with us or are you just kind of with us until you got your next Galactic Empire deal and Black Panther says oh no I promise you no I promise you I'm, I'm gonna be here right oh and of course that's total bull because uh, by the end you know he has to go back on that promise and then you know black panther he goes back to wakanda to do kingly empire things and and you know the uh i guess you would call it not necessarily a senate but uh the cabinet what kind yeah. of cabinet they're sitting around and they're trying to do what kind of things and and they're talking about taxes and the commission study of this and you know and, uh, and all this other stuff that you know mundane things and and the emperor is sitting in there and he's trying to talk. He's like, Hey, can I get a minute? Can I get a minute? Can I get a minute? And you know, and, and finally they give him a second, like, hey, okay, all right, what do you have to say? And he's like, Well, I think we should do the thing and commission a burial to do the thing and then study it to do, do it off later. And it's like and then you can see like everybody's doing like this, like, Oh my god. <laughs> said, said, did nobody tell him? And then they then they remind you, like, hey, you you are our king, you are an emperor. But the thing is about being emperor, um, you don't actually do anything, right? You're you're you're, you're like the <laughs> queen of England. We love you, and we're gonna put your we're gonna put your face on the money and everything. But you don't actually do anything. You don't get to actually tell us to do anything. That that's that's the thing about being emperor and everything, which is crazy, right? Yeah. Um, it's like a symbolic uh, title. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 so it's weird, right? Because you know he's the one that freaking saved them, took them out of freaking bondage and. and and all that stuff, but they don't want to actually listen to him. Um, so, so then you know, from there, you know, you go, he's got to you know, go out with his tail between his legs, and, and then we they take us to another part of the world. I forget what part of it was. Uh, let's see, where were they? Uh, okay, Chile, right? Yeah, they, they were in Chile, and uh, we see two. Two characters that actually work for T'Challa, I guess, uh, secretly, I guess, for spies, whatever. And, but no, they're not, they're not there to do work. You know, they're just there to just hook up and do, you know, what sexy people do. You know, you know when they're when they're off when they're off time, right? You know, you know, and they're to make cracking wise and cracking jokes and and you know, doing their thing. And then let's see, no, you can somebody start shooting up the place, right? Kill, you know, kill kills kills one of them. Um, and it turns out that what was actually going on is that they were part of a secret network of spies that Tajala had hired, um, no, no, just to keep an eye out. Um, because when they opened up Wakanda, uh, he did it with you know an open heart, but he knew that he wasn't going to be just be able to trust everybody, right? Like, 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 oh, I'm gonna open up my house. But mm -hmm. I'm still keeping an eye on. I, you, you need to know. I still got cameras everywhere, so you can't just freaking walk away with the silverware and you know and grandma's ring. You know, I'm gonna keep an eye out. Um, but apparently, somebody has figured out that this is a deal, and they're gonna start. I guess they're gonna start killing off these spies. So one of the spies actually survives and is able to get communicate back to T'Challa that this is happening. Um, of course, of course, you know they weren't even supposed to be meeting each other and. And you know, so it, it's just weird that the way this turned out. But you know, I think it's it's kind it's kind of valid about what what happened. Um, you know, it, it's just special trick rather. They, if 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 your boss tells you not to go meet out with each other, don't don't go about go meet out with each other until the mission's over. Um, 
So in the meantime, you know, the it becomes apparent that you know they need to do some more investigating and do some do whatever. So in the meantime, you know, Black Panther talks to you know send them communicate to Captain America. Like, hey, brother, uh, I got my house is all jacked up, so I'm not going to be able to come and party with you guys for a little while. I'm retiring. I'm out. So after all this, after all, all this, though, know, what has it been? Chair, chairman for what two years now? I guess. Right. Well, hey, yes. Yeah, since, since Jason Aaron's Avengers launched, he's been the chairman. Which, you know, we we can we complain about this a lot, right? Where stuff that's happening in other books doesn't affect the Avengers book, or you know, and then the, the I thought this the, the that that was kind of laughable with Captain America and Black Panther, where Captain America is kind of calling him out for being out in space for so long. I'm like, really? Cause we didn't really notice that in the Avengers book. He's been there the entire time. He hasn't exactly. missed any, he hasn't yeah. missed anything. And um, for, for that, I was, I was kind of like, Oh, it's going to use that now uh, to kind of throw in his face that you were off running the galactic empire for months and months, but uh, you kept showing up in the Avengers book, you know? Maybe that's why uh, you know he. Plus, he puts together the agents of Wakanda. That was like the spinoff of it, yes. the Secret Avengers team. Yeah, that you know probably would have still been going if not for COVID, right? Um, it's total crap. You know and why? I'm, <laughs> so I was just like, okay, but I, you know, for the purposes of this storyline, I'm buying it, right? Because if this is gonna like get Black Panther out of the Avengers or something like that, I'm all for it. And I liked the fact that we get to see more of the um, political intrigue, so to speak, with um, with like what exactly Black Panther was doing, because we saw this in um, in uh, in Priest Run years ago about how um, T'Challa had agents everywhere because he didn't trust anyone. And he was like, he was almost like the Batman of the Avengers, right? Like he had the secret dossiers on all of the members, how to beat them, stuff like that, just in case this came up. This was actually the next big thing that, I mean, T'Challa has sleeper agents all over the world in case he ever gets assassinated or something like that, or an, or an attempt on his life. He's got these agents out there to take immediate action on uh, like on like re whether it's revenge or intelligence gathering, what have you, and that's what we have these these other characters uh, that that they had in this book. Uh, Omalala was the female one; she's the one that survives, and they kill off her boyfriend. Um, but the reason that they're not supposed to be meeting is because they're sleeper agents, and no one's supposed to know. Right. <laughs> so, so <laughs> yeah. in fact, in fact, even everybody in Wakanda, even Shuri, thinks that they're dead. They're dead. That they're not exactly. alive. Yep. So this was all T'Challa's doing is put these chess pieces all over the world in case I need them for something because I don't trust anybody. And that's that has been Black Panther's MO for a long time that they haven't gotten back to in this forever. And I'm really glad that John Ridley kind of just jumped right in um, yes. because now going forward, that kind of sets the baseline for Black Panther where – He's not a trusting guy. And even though he might have been the chairman of the Avengers, what was he doing? You know, we know he put together the agents of Wakanda as his own little secret group. You know, that, yeah, yeah you know, I'm not even sure if, if most of the Avengers knew that they were around. All they knew Gorilla Man was the butler. They didn't know Gorilla Man was part of these this agents of Wakanda. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. plus, we, you know, we'll and, talk about and we'll, get in, and we'll get into some <laughs> Gorilla Man stuff and Avengers in the next one. It's um, yeah, but um, but this so this book I think um is a great first issue to set the baseline for this Black Panther going forward. And I know that um, so we see a little bit, especially on this cover where you see the Galactic Empire. So we know that they're gonna they're gonna kind of reference uh, Coates's run, um. But I mean, that is kind of that is kind of a thing now. Do you, how do you how do you get out of that Galactic Empire story, where you know that like Wakanda is now this this force in the universe? How do you roll that back? Right. Uh, he, exactly right. So on the one on the one hand, he needs this Galactic Force because got to remember the the whole thing about the uh, what's the name of the metal the vibranium. Yep. That's out there. They need it. They need the galactic empire to bring back the vibranium, right? Because there's there's no vibranium on Earth right now because they got rid of it. So they need the galactic empire to keep mining it and keep bringing it back to them for for whatever, right? Um, and that, and that's fine. I get it. 
that that's that piece is fine. What I don't get is okay, now he's back in Wakanda in Africa. Mm-hmm. And they're talking and they got the prime minister and the cabinet and they're talking everything. Why why are they talking about tax code? Why are they talking <laughs> about family mandated family leave? Why are they talking about economic stimulus packages and guaranteeing this is these are not African problems. These are not problems that even a galactic empire would care about. So this is this is and and, and this is not on J- John really at right. all because Tanisha Cates missed this whole prop missed the whole thing as well. If you're going to have an African king or African monarch, he's got to be addressing African problems like real African problems, mm-hmm. and they seem to not be able to pick up CNN or freaking just do basic research on hey what are some major problems in that and and and. You know what about you no know, ISIS Africa or you know the oil stuff yeah. that they or or blood diamonds. Uh, everyone's like, like throwing a blood diamonds or whatever. Yeah, or va- vaccinations out there, or AIDS or stuff like that. AIDS is still a huge problem over there, and 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 uh, communicable diseases. That's something that Wakanda should be all over. Right. Right. You know, so it's it's been a long time since like maybe the first Black Panther movie. <laughs> Where I saw them actually talk about an actual, you know, problem that's in Africa, and that was the human trafficking thing. That was it. Mm-hmm. That was it. That was the last time I saw any type of Black Panther book. Even even when you had Shuri, Shuri's book. Yeah. Right? What was her biggest problem with that Shuri book? The big ass praying mantis. Oh yeah, yeah, that was stupid. Remember that? Yep. Yep. <sighs> I, I've been in Africa many times. I was have at one point half my life was I had never seen a praying mantis in Africa in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, the you know, praying mantis nor locusts, but oh, here we go. We got a big, big ass praying mantis over here. Sorry, all right, good to go. But so, so here, here's what I would I will agree to you. It's it's a good start. It's it's very intelligible. I, I like what they're trying to do. They're trying to disengage. You know, uh, T'Challa from some of these from some of these stuff things that he's that he did he doesn't need. Um, but I want him to just not just disengage, but to be going into something else, to be growing somehow. Um, you know, where he is right now for the Atlantic Empire, I got it makes sense because of stuff that happens in the past. But don't just disengage him from the rest of stuff. Put him towards some other stuff. And that'll definitely be interesting. But like, like, you, like even the agents of Wakanda stuff, like they forgot the whole thing. And a big problem with agents of Wakanda. Remember new agents of Atlas? Mm-hmm. Yep. That, that was great because they had like five or six new characters in there. When they did the agents of Wakanda, those are all characters that were that nobody cared about, nor you know, and they were they were, they were just kind of there. Guess, it was get, there was like a no rhyme or reason to who was in that group. Yep. And guess which guess which book is a thousand dollar book right now? Not that, agents of Wakanda or Alice. No, of Alice. That's a thousand dollar book. Oh, because it's right the now. first appearances of all those characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's uh let's spin off from from Black Panther. Well and we touched on um on the seven hundred and fiftieth issue of avengers um this run would be issue 50 and uh this this issue is issue 50 of jason aaron's dismal abhorrent run on this comic and i am going to eviscerate this book so i want to apologize to people that are avengers fans ahead of time i will say that i am probably consider myself one of the biggest avengers fans ever and uh this run I've complained, if you've ever listened to this podcast before, every time we review Avengers, I can't stand this book because the Avengers are side characters in their own book. And everything that happens in in the Marvel Universe apparently is way more important than what's happening in in the lives of our characters. Um, They, you know, they they spend some time on a couple of characters in this issue, Ghost Rider, She-Hulk. But for the most part, the rest of the Avengers don't factor in. Um, but let me give give you some uh, some credits here first. So Jason Aaron wrote this. Um, there there are several artists: Aaron Cooter, Carlos Pacheco, Pacheco, Ed McGinnis, Javier Garon. Um, inkers: Aaron Cooter, Rafael Fonteras, Ed McGinnis, Javier Garon. 
colorists Alex Sinclair, David Creel, Matt Hollingsworth, Rachel Rosenberg with David Bell down on letters. Um, and there's a special backup story by Christopher Rocio, Steve McNiven, and Frank Darmada. Um, and that kind of explains where I think where Thor was this entire issue. But this issue not only is it, it just brings it's an 80 page giant for 10 bucks, by the way. So yes. the, 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 the biggest caveat is that if this is not a jumping on point for anyone, if you haven't been reading the Avengers, don't even bother picking this up um, because the there's almost every page is like a, a scene jump to a different character. Um, and most of those, these characters aren't Avengers and their bad side, side characters, side stories, the people, characters and in, in, in plot lines brought back up from, um, from dozens of issues ago that they never got back to. Um, and it's very, very confusing if you're just getting on board. Um, they bring back in the first page, they bring back the orb who mm -hmm. has, who we've seen maybe sporadically since the uh, original sin limited series from 10 years ago, where, um, where the watcher was killed. And now the, the orb is walking around with, uh, with the eye of Watu. And, um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, so this character, this character, I mean, kind of a throwaway joke, ghost rider villain from forever ago anyway. Um, but they bring him in and somehow he's going to factor into this major plot line um, going forward. So let's see where this goes. Um, and then on page three, we get um, Kazar, who, guess what? Agents of Wakanda, right? But he's this now he's time traveling through uh, through time and space. He's back into the uh, the one million B.C. Avengers. Yes, sir. And he's got a time knife that allows him to travel through time. Um, which on paper, great, um, great idea for this character because he's kind of stale anyway, but, um, there's nothing mentioned about this in Kazar's own friggin' book <laughs> that's yes. be currently being published yes. right now. There's not even a mention that he has a time knife, <laughs> which I, I mean, I think and... it's an awesome idea, <laughs> but I'm like, couldn't we reference this somewhere? And now... Uh, and he takes on uh, Kid Thanos. Enough said about that. Okay. Where did that Where did that come from? Where did I remember? I remember, ba I remember Baby Thanos. Yeah, I remember Baby Thanos too with Cosmic Ghost Rider. Uh, yeah, Kid Thanos. I've I've no idea where he came from, but hey, another new newish newish type character. We get now we get the one billion BC Avengers in here uh, with the biggest plot twist storyline going here is that um phoenix or this this one billion phoenix is now thor's mother um and odin yes. who uh, for some reason is carrying around mjolnir and um he built mjolnir later i believe yeah, right yes so that is a you know some of these some of these ideas like you have the the uh the star brand hulk um you know and i i i mean i get it you know, but a lot of this is just, please, these 1 million BC Avengers have been around since like issue one of this current series. They've never done anything with them, really. They're just yeah. there. You know, they're there. They haven't done anything other than in this issue where, you know, maybe they kill off a few of them. Um, but now we have, um, they they wrap up, they jump around, jump, let's jump, jump right back into um the She-Hulk storyline, because this is also the wrap-up from the last few issues of Avengers with the World War She-Hulk storyline, where they kind of get her back to normal. They have her absorb um, a gamma bomb that the that Russia de detonates at on the bottom of it, uh, Atlantis. <laughs> well, like, yes. What the heck is Russia attacking Atlantis for? And so She-Hulk... And, and Namor up. is just totally cool with it, just chill, like... Yeah, well, so She Hulk saves Atlantis, right, by absorbing the gamma bomb, which for some reason turns her back to old Jennifer Walters She Hulk instead of the savage She Hulk that she's been for the last couple of years. Okay, that's fine. I wanted the old She Hulk back anyway. So whatever you need to do to get that back, I'm cool with it. Uh, whatever. But this, but they but they turn this into later on down the road uh, is. She Hulk or Namor says, Oh, She Hulk, you saved Atlantis. Anything I can do to 
uh, to make it up to you, I would uh, I would prefer like I, I will do whatever you want. So she has him join the Avengers after they've been fighting with him for the last fifty issues. Now yeah. he's he's a he's a member. Not, I don't really think that that's a bad bad idea anyway too because Namor's been an Avenger before very briefly back in the nineteen eighties, um, and you know he's got that pre built relationship with Captain America from the Invaders. I don't have a problem with Namor being in the Avengers. I just think where they've kind of driven Namor back so far, like to his roots where, um, you know, that he was in the X-Men or, you know, he's, he's kind of that anti-human uh, character again. So that's, yeah. So that's, so that's where it really does go. So, um, so Within the last two years, they have built many storylines on top of each other where yep. Namor has, in no uncertain terms, got on the TV, pointed oh. missiles, oh. trash ships, just to let the humans know that we are mortal enemies. Yep. Not, Been not at war. Up. Yep. So now you got Namor as part of the Avengers. So politically, if I'm a president, or an executive, I'm going to say, well, I guess we're at war with the Avengers right now, right? Because because th there's that thing, and then don't forget, She-Hulk is out there, right? She, uh, her cousin David Banner, he's at war. <laughs> don't forget that he's at war with yeah. the United States government right now. So yeah. now you got two members, two freaking members who are at, or who are consistently are at war with the United States government yeah. right now. Yep. Captain America, he was the supreme commander not not more than not less than three years ago. Yep. Yeah. So just you know, I, I kind of want to touch on everything in this eighty page giant because there's just so much going on here that that it does it just makes it so confusing. So we have so we have Kazar uh, or we have the uh, they introduced Doctor Doom. Now we haven't seen Doctor Doom in here in 50 issues but now they're introducing and he's not dr doom he's the doom above all weird right, right? so he's he's like the alt the master of the darkest all they call him the doom above all and he puts together this team of villains because in which mephisto who is still running around in here says you know hey you know it works for them why not us so let's form let's form our own villain team which becomes uh the new masters of evil right um and i'll i'll get to them in a minute but the you know you jump down now, now kazar comes back and he gets pulled out of the time stream to face what this armored this armored guy obviously with these red word bubbles you know that it's it's a uh, it's mephisto's agent howard stark Yes. Tony Stark's father, who they resurrected dozens of issues ago in the Avengers and never, ever really went back to it. And now all of a sudden he's walking around in this steampunk armor, um, much like like Iron Man armor. But um, now it's, it's Howard Stark. And yeah, do you think he's a member of the Masters of Evil? Probably, right? So now you get uh, finally you get a couple of pages of uh, the Avengers, but just, you know, that's just basically with um, Robbie Ray's saying, you know, I'm, I'm having these dreams and, you know, this is basically just to get a uh, spinoff Robbie into his own Avengers Forever book that's coming out next month. So that's goodbye, Robbie, because he's going to get pulled out of the time stream and now we're not going to see him anymore. Uh, then you get name like Namor, let's jump into this book. We have uh, Red Widow. Oh, they bring back the Squadron Supreme. We haven't seen the Squadron Supreme in a few months, um, but now they're back to being straight up villains. So are they the Squadron Sinister or are they the Squadron Supreme? Not sure, but we get uh, we get Princess Power Princess uh, shoves her fist through Dr. Spectrum and kills him <laughs> for no reason. Well, I don't know. I don't know. They were, they were always worked before, and I have no idea. And then they have Hyperion. Uh, trapped and making them making him uh i don't know what they're torturing him for do you know no i no. did that it's out of the blue like i don't know where that came from um and then uh hey let's bring in a couple of new avengers right let's have uh valkyrie join the avengers for no reason yes. 
right. and then have um, have Deathlock, and not just one Deathlock, right? Now we're going to have several different Deathlocks from different timelines who are now on a mission to find the the Prime Avenger, right? The, or the Avenger Prime. And guess who the Avenger Prime is? The Avenger Prime is Robbie Reyes for some reason. Am I right? Because I'm super confused over what's going on here. I have no clue, man. Yeah, you got you got you got She Hulk all over the place. You got all these other characters all over the place. They, they don't they don't take the time to annotate. Hey, this is Universe Six One Six. This is Universe Nine One Nine. None of that stuff. So they're, they're yep. just letting it go, and and doesn't make make any sense. And, yep. and to include the fact that Namor, you got Namor at some point kneeling down to She Hulk, which a monarch king should never do. Right. So was Kazar and one of the agents of Wakanda? I don't remember that. Kazar was an agent of Wakanda, um, which apparently we get because Kazar gets a lot of screen time in this book, and so it, I mean, obvious that he's going to be on the main roster at some point. And honestly, if you're going to be on the main roster for the Avengers, you better have a time knife or something like that, because Kazar the Savage does not fit in the team uh, at any point in in his it's, team's it's, history. It's been bad enough that they've been trying to shoehorn Conan in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now we get Howard Stark. They introduce him. Now there's Mephisto. They show that this backstory with Mephisto and Howard Stark. And Mephisto is actually dressed as um, – he looks like Modred the Mystic. And I don't even know if you remember that character from 50 years ago. Uh, but he was uh, – he, he wrapped into – you know, the Scarlet Witch's storyline, the high evolutionary and all that. Um, but he looks exactly, he's got the, he's got the hood and the, and the kind of the white beard. And he kind of looks like uh, Modred the Mystic, which makes me think that that might be someone that they reintroduce in the future. Um, but then we get some backstory on, on Howard with Kazar. They, you know, they throw Galactus in there for good measure, and uh, Kazar becomes. Does Kazar become the herald of Galactus in this? Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh my Christ! Like what the heck? And then we find out. So he puts. Uh, they have the Masters of Evil fight the billion year Avengers, kill off a few of them, and then we get we get to see uh, the full reveal for these Masters of the Masters of Evil, where you have Kid Thanos. You have Doc, the Doom above all. You have the Black Skull, which they introduced in the Heroes Reborn stories, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have uh, Killmonger, who looks like he's wearing uh, the Destroyer armor, but it's red. And then we have um, the uh, Phoenix, but it looks like Destiny, right? And then... Um, of course, you have uh, you, you have a savage uh, Wolverine clone in these the Masters of Evil. <sighs> so, so let's let's give this the, the rundown. So we have new members that it looks like that that might be happening. We have Valkyrie, Deathlock, Namor, Kazar, and um, I think that's it. I hope that's it. Would we get like five new Avengers? That's the most that they've ever introduced in one story. Um, so they're spinning off uh, Robbie Ray's into Avengers Forever. So maybe we'll see that. Hopefully, that's a better book than this one. Um, and then uh, the oh, they, the the orb that they bring into the book in page one, they kill him off in like page sixty-five. By the Doctor Doom kills him, right? So for why? Because does Doctor Doom take Uatu's eye? I don't see that. Oh, and then you have the Ghost yeah. Goblin as part of the Masters of Evil, who uh, is, yes. is a new is a new character. Yes. Um, so, man, <clears throat> they, look, they, I, I got it. They they had eighty pages, and they wanted to put in as much information as possible, but none of it goes together. Absolutely none of it. You know, this is it, this is stuff that should have been prepped because each look, this is not the first time we've seen any of these characters within the last two years or within the last year. Right. right. Like, like the Supreme Commander, like the Supreme Team or whatever you freaking call those guys. They they had a series that not but a few months ago. Right. Yeah. The, if they were going to do this with them, they should have introduced that. Hey, eventually this would be happening. So we, this doesn't come out of the freaking blue. And now all of a sudden they got to cram it all into a 
80 page giant and then charge you 9.99 for it um so this would have been a perfect issue for them to wrap up a lot of those th dangling plot threads you know for you know jason aaron has just so many uh pots on the fire here that i stopped caring a long time ago you know i love the squadron supreme love them mm -hmm. i i died they're not this is not the book for them right now they, they had a storyline a couple of years ago that they never resolved spun off into heroes return never never resolved that now they're here again and starting a new sort new story thread well i don't know right uh the masters of evil i this, i get it i get the masters of evil but this is kind of like a a billion year bc masters of evil which is just as stupid as the billion bc avengers yes uh, I, I don't i don't <clears throat> see like why don't they just give the million year bc avengers a limited series tie up all those threads give the squad well, they, 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 they tried that and threads. nobody they tried that nobody wanted to read it um, right but since but we're it, all suckers in buying the avengers book we'll read it we'll read about anything even if the avengers are only in one or two pages right what how many pages of this 80 page giant do you think the avengers were actually in i saw one panel where it's like black panther captain america robin reyes um and she hulk and they were just kind of standing around they weren't actually doing anything yeah so there's probably there's i think that they probably about 10 pages in this book i mean they not even not even a, a look regular a regular book right so there, there's a couple of pages where they wrap up the storyline but then as a group they're not together right they're only at together on like page 35 when they're all together at the table but not even then it's not all of them so now you have uh, you know, you have She-Hulk with her own little storyline, Robbie with his own little storyline, and then nobody else gets attention on the Avengers except all these side characters, and then all these new characters that they're going to introduce. And as soon as they're part of the team, Jason Aaron will forget about them and not feature them in the book. You know. Here's a question: Since when could the Hulk, any Hulk, just like soak in radiation whenever they wanted to? I thought it was just something that kind of happened to him. Well, you know, a few years ago when they when they redid She Hulk post Civil War II, right? Because she supposedly died there, and then they turned her in. Remember when she was that gray Hulk? Yeah, she was she she was actually emitting gamma gamma radiation, and she was able to absorb it too. But they never they kind of got away from that when they turned her back into <laughs> green, um, which I don't know why she turned from gray to green. They never really explain explain that at all, um, but this yeah yeah i mean it's just it's a it's a it's a MacGuffin storyline for them to to just get her back to the jennifer walters because she's getting her own book again too right yes so yep. you know they needed to get her back to her baseline which like i said before i don't care how you do it as long as you did it i'll buy whatever you tell me you know like that you know she absorbed the game radiation hey she like she saved atlantis too <laughs> yeah, out of nowhere. Out of, uh, out of nowhere. Literally out of nowhere. It is really kind of um it, it's this this book infuriates me because I love the Avengers so much. And it's just that when you see this book and and I I said three years ago this book had gone out off the rails um as far as focusing on the team, um like too many subplots, uh too many side stories too many characters that aren't important to the Avengers being in the book. So um, anyway, let's uh, let's pivot from this and let's talk about our last book because we're running out of time and this is going to be really quick too. Um, I want to talk about Marvels because I want to leave this podcast on a good note. This is a fantastic book by Kurt Busiek. And um, give me a second until I get the artist. It's um, Yildiray uh sinar with inks by guru um this book is is such a uh, uh it's like a love note to golden age marvel silver age marvel obscure characters obscure storylines all tied up adeptly by a great great comic book writer kurt busiek and this book has me riveted because i don't know where it's going I 
I see these characters and I'm like, oh, I, the the, uh, the Lotus, I, the Lady Lotus, I remember her, but not I haven't seen her in like 50 years. And then yes. and then they pull her out and they give her this great backstory. They tell you they tell you about you know hey I used to be a, I used to be in World War II fight the invaders uh, the the Lotus potions that I use stops my aging so explain all that stuff and then here's the bad guys that I used to work with Monsieur Cruel oh yeah I remember Monsieur Cruel from Iron Man oh I remember this guy from this book I remember the, I'm like I'm like come on Kurt pull out all these characters out of your butt and he's been doing that for like five uh, five months now this is issue six right and yes. and he's mm -hmm. weaving this story that's so like just marinating in awesome golden age silver age type stories and characters there's there's another character in in this book he's not in this issue but um the tinkerer's son who is kind of using all of like these old um old super villain gimmicks but he's using them to uh, to uh kind of do what he's like a MacGyver, right? And he's yeah, he's just flying yeah. he's flying around in an old fantastic car. <laughs> it's just <Yeah. laughs> he's just fun. And then you have uh you, you're bringing in Captain America, you're bringing in Storm, you're bringing in Iron Man, Hugh and Torch. So just you know, kind of a little bit of everybody from the corners of the universe. And then they introduce another character like Warbird, and it looks like next issue they're bringing back the Golden Age Vision. And yes. so with these characters, man you know what this book reminds me of it reminds me of astro city yes if you ever yes. read astro city yes. kurt busiek wrote that and uh and it was done by so alex ross did the covers for that too so this is this book is marvel's astro city and it's kind of focuses on a different character every issue different storyline but so fleshed out and so well done that you really if you're not picking up this book go get it go find the other five issues get some get some marvel history he pays he pays attention to what came before but treads the world treads the road going forward in a logical way and i love this book that's that's that is all there is to say about that right <laughs> it, it, that literally is all the way because you know the question always is hey when this big event was happening like a world a world war uh, war or you no know, even like the little battles the vietnam war the Viet Cong freaking skirmish and everything what were the superheroes doing and the yep. marvels has been answering that this is where they were this is why they couldn't just freaking pop in because they had to get permission from this entity and that entity yep. definitely freaking love it going into the nat's ass on, on some of this stuff very good very good writing, very good stuff. As the jump to shark on some of this, yeah, but at least it tries, right? Um, <laughs> this book you know, is deserving of one of your powerpoints because yeah. <laughs> you could just put together all the characters and where they came from and and where they're going. And that's uh, that's where I kind of think um, that Kurt Busiek does a great job with pulling some of these old old characters that you're not not used to seeing and actually doing something with them. This is right. like a Lady Lotus character perfect for you know you marvel wants to be diverse what marvel wants to be inclusive these characters have been around for 50 or 60 or 70 years in some cases yes. mm -hmm. do you know you don't need that you know you can you can be diverse and inclusive with these characters and just update them for today that's that's where i think busiek is just a, a genius in this and it, and to make it feel like astro city which was such a fun book anyway this is just fun it is just it's fun to read from cover to cover absolutely amazing stuff um i i i can't say anything about it man it was just perfect it, it just it just did every every single issue from one to six now has has rung the bell and not only that not only have they talked about some of the older characters they actually brought us some new characters as well um yeah. did they have any senses that might piss me off yeah but uh, let me let me let me let me see if I can bring up this one particular joint, um, this Silver Surfer joint. That one freaking takes the cake. This one is a Silver Surfer cover variant by Lee Bermejo. Oh, huh? I don't know if you remember that one. This one is a freaking yeah. awesome freaking cover, right? That is a great um, cover. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it's it's. Marvel has done what it so 
remember like those those old life story joints? Yep. 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 So they should have music all over it, figure right there, because the way that he's actually pieced the stuff together and made it make sense. Yep. And the way I like, okay, now that I remember who this character is, or now that I know who that character is, I want to see more about that character. Good stuff. Absolutely yep. good stuff. That's I mean, and and to to be able to this is the kind of book that you use to build on a fan base, right? So that's you know, you people that come in and already like Cap, already like Iron Man, but then you come in here and you're getting a, a maybe a character you've never heard before. You know, yeah. uh, so Lady Lotus, and she's like, this is her issue. Um, she's a villain, but maybe not, maybe not so much anymore, right? So yeah, yeah. Um, now that I mean, they're giving her a background that makes more sense, right? Yeah. And that Mar that's what one thing that Marvel has been able to do, especially through the MCU, is like, hey, this person right now is counter what we want to do, and is it's kind of bad. But guess what? There was something in her past that made her that way, and now we're going to have kind of a, a story arc that changes her to the other side and makes you feel feel something for this character. Right, man. So, All right, so we're we're over on our time, so <laughs> we're gonna sir. wrap this up and uh, see us again in a couple of weeks where uh, we'll probably be uh, all over Spider-Man No Way Home. We have, we'll have a couple of more episodes of Hawkeye, so we'll have more of an idea where that's going. And uh, but we'll, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll touch on Devil's Reign that starts next week. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. don't, I think She-Hulk is coming out this week. This week. So we might want to bring that back up and see how, <laughs> how she's doing with her new irradiated gamma bomb that she's freaking decided to soak in all right all right so that's a bet we'll talk about that um all right so enjoy uh, the next couple of weeks and uh hope you get all your christmas shopping done and we will be back for what may be the final episode of the year maybe unless maybe. unless we're doing a new year's episode christmas special i don't know maybe. christmas maybe. special maybe. Mm. end of the year awards we'll see oh okay there you go. <laughs> all right Enjoy, and we will see you in a fortnight. Happy Hanukkah.